Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I've got several clips for you today. The first one is with Judge Kirkham. And if you're married to somebody in the military, or you have any arguments with your mother-in-law or have an overbearing mother-in-law, this one might interest you. And then the second clip is with Judge Bronlich, and it's someone we've seen before. It's a woman that we've seen before, or a couple that we've seen before, and I just thought this would be an update. And then Judge Hayward has someone in her courtroom for DV, and she gives him a little bit of a start, and he deserves it. He deserves it. And then the last clip is the Sovereign Citizen I had on, I did by itself earlier today. I just thought I'd throw it in. It was funny. So I thought I'd end with something a little more comical, just a little more that would make you laugh. So here you go. The 37th Circuit Court is now in session with the Honorable Brian K. Kirkham presiding. It is Monday, on March 11, 2024, at 1.26 p.m., and this is 2023-3294-DZ, Bridget Rafferty, Terrence Rafferty, two plaintiffs, versus Christina Rafferty, attorney Julia Kazuli is filling in for attorney Kelly for a plaintiff. Good afternoon to all of you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'll go to the attorney first as they represent the uh, plaintiffs. And Ms. Zuli, let enlighten me what's happening in the case. Um, it is my understanding, Your Honor, that the parties had some sort of an agreement to mediate. Um, there was an issue with paying the fee, and then we found out later by the defendant that she no longer wants to mediate. So upon um, with discussion with uh, Mr. Kelly, he had indicated to me that the parties would like to move forward with scheduling, um, I believe, an evidentiary hearing on this matter. Okay. Ms. Uh, Christine Rafferty, what's what's your position on this matter? Um, good, good afternoon, Your Honor. Um, I had found out um, on February 14th, after being contacted by the VA, that um, in the planning of a memorial service for my late husband to be memorialized in Battle Creek, that um, Bridget Rafferty had already, um, without my knowledge, signed paperwork um, as my husband's next of kin in order to receive his burial flag and military honors at the funeral that she planned. And I am now having to go through the process with the VA and the National Cemetery Service of demonstrating um, that this was not correct. Um, my children and I are the next of kin. Um, and I take great offense to the fact that um, Bridget chose to fraudulently sign documents denying the existence hey, of her children. That's that's not really involved in our case. Well, that's why I have changed my mind. Um, I don't believe that people who don't know my children who defrauded to take something of theirs that their father served his whole life for should be able to establish a relationship with my children. I no longer agree to it. Okay. Well, okay, it looks like uh, we've reached impasse and the mediation isn't gonna be, uh, again, helpful in this matter. So what we will do is we will contact uh, Ms. Kelly at this point and probably, and then Ms. Christina Rafferty and we'll set up a time when they're available and we'll have a trial on the matter. Thank um, you. Okay, we'll, we'll, have it, we'll have it set for trial and uh, I guess, uh, Ms. Uli, what do you think time-wise we're going to we need? Could, yes, um, I believe if we could get at least um, 60 days, 40, 60 days, Your Honor, just in case for any trial prep. Okay, well, that, they'll, they'll set that based upon when, when they call you, et cetera. How many days do you think we're going to need for trial? Uh, I would say one day should suffice. Okay. Should. Ms. Christina Rafferty, are you think one day would do this? Absolutely, Your Honor. Okay. Okay, we will uh, contact you in uh, probably the next day or so and uh, set up a time when everyone's available, and then we'll try the case. All right, thank you okay. so much, Your Honor. That's good. 
Thank you, Your okay. Honor. Okay, thank you. Bye. Rigo, have a good afternoon. You, you as well. Yes. Court is now in session on page two, Tyler Zanka versus Kaylee DeRich. For the record, this matter is before the court for the purpose of reviewing um, defendant mother's parenting time. Uh, this hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Present is attorney Derek Jacques representing the plaintiff father, Tyler Zaka. Mr. Zaka appears to be present with Mr. Jacques. In addition, uh, defendant mother, Kelly the merchant appears to be present. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The parties have conferred with Mr. Pratt for the front of the court this afternoon. Mr. Pratt has provided the court the fine recommendation uh, that uh, mother um, will have supervised parenting time with family counseling and child services once she is released from Sacred Heart. And the parties will appear back before the court. The court's going to keep this matter on our docket so we can reestablish a relationship between mom and, and minor child Jack. So we'll review this matter on May 28th, 2024 at 1 30 p.m. That is recommendation. Um, Ms. DeMerchant, do you understand the recommendation? I understand the recommendation and I'd like to uh, fight, fight against that, sir, because you uh, knowingly, um, I don't know how to say this. Like, I mean, I have not seen my son in eight months. I have not touched him. I have not hugged him. Um, the, the last court hearing residing just required me to go to psych evaluation. Now I provided psych evaluation. Um, I, I didn't even have to do that for Mr. Jacques. And he's all concerned about diagnosis, diagnostics that I've had, diagnoses that I've had for 20 some odd years. I understand that. And then he wanted to say that, oh, we're, we're still afraid of the safety of the child. Now, Sacred Heart Facility in Clearview it, it is a women's facility for children. And I understand that it's court docketed at this other's uh, you know, a service down in Monroe County. However, where I reside now is Kimball Township. Now, I asked friend of the court if my son could come visit me because I haven't even touched touched him, and I don't even remember when. And then Mr. Jock then proceeded to say that um, it was an unsafe environment for a five year old. Now, I have my counselor. Her name is Chris. Chris, what's your last name? Peltier. Peltier. Uh, with me, and she can advocate for what type of facility this is. And so, I, I, I mean, with, with your permission, sir, I would appreciate it if, if she could at least step in and explain to you where I'm at and what the facility encompasses. All right, Mr. Birchard, the court's familiar with the Sacred Heart. Will they allow a, a child to come in to visit? Yes. Yes. Is is there a, is there a um, a common a common area where it's appropriate for for a visitation, a, yes. uh, a community yes. room or something of that nature. When um, can I, can I can I I turn it over to Chris because she can advocate further about what everything encompasses and what kind of counselors and people that are here are supervising the children. Please and thank the you. Courts, the court is familiar with Sacred Heart, ma'am. I don't need an education about Sacred Heart. Uh, do thank you have you. an expected discharge date or not? Um, right now, um, it's kind of up up in the air um like i mean i can stay here i believe because i'm part of st Clair county how many extensions can i get chris well it's it's a wonderful facility and obviously we just want you to be well because uh, jack is five and yes you need to be part of his life mr yeah, Jack, um, is, is your client opposed to once a week just taking my child over there for an hour to visit with mom my client is opposed to that due to the yeah. nature of the facility due to the fact that the reasons that Mr. Merchant has not seen the child in such a long period of time were caused by her own actions or inactions, not anything that that we've done maliciously against her. The entire reason for these treatment programs was to ensure that she was on the right track moving forward. And we are happy that she is in this center and hopefully moving forward to, to be able to be brought back into their son's life. But at this point, this is a facility that's nearly two hours away from where my client lives. It's not been completed. There's been occasions in the past where Mr. Merchant has not successfully completed these programs. The psychiatric facility that she was in for psychiatric treatment for 10 days had concerning statements in their notes um, with her being discharged saying that the patient will remain at a chronically elevated risk for harm to self and her others due to her impulsivity and or substance abuse, that she had suicidal ideologies as to being admitted and while she was there. And this was from February 16th until February 26th. So these 
I object. Votes occurred after our last hearing even took place. So we have serious mm -hmm. concerns moving forward, but. Uh, no, I object to that. Mr. Sir. Mr. Merchant, Mr. Merchant, don't interrupt, please. But yes, sir. Uh, my client, Mr. Zonka, nonetheless, wishes for there to be some development towards a relationship other than just phone calls mm -hmm. or video chats between their son and Mr. Merchant. However, we think that shelter family service is more appropriate once there's a showing that these services have been successfully completed as to the inpatient rehabilitation therapy for substance abuse that Mr. Merchant's in at this time. Once she's discharged, we're happy to start, have them supervise in the center, get reports done to ourselves in the court and make sure things are going smoothly and then take it from there. But as of now, there there's nothing to show that this is actually going to be completed. Well, Mr. Merchant, uh, how many months have you been in Sacred Heart? I have not been in Sacred Heart for months, but I have provided months worth of uh, clean drug screens to Mr. Jock, which he also failed to mention. Also, on my behalf, how long, how long, ma'am, have you been a resident of Sacred Heart? Uh, how long? Only, only about eight days, sir. Um, before oh. then, I. Okay. Before I then, I was Sacred hospitalized. Heart. Wait, hold on, sir. Before then, I was hospitalized for ten days, and then I also got involved with community mental health services, Safe Horizon services, and. Um, and, uh, as far as like, um, I am eight months pregnant currently, sir. And I also got involved with adoption and outreach, uh, programs for my child and WIC. Um, simultaneously, it just sounds like that they want documentation of how the child is being taken care of. I also object to the suicidal ideation. Mr. Zonka knows himself and the order was to get into psychiatric care, correct, sir? In order to get into inpatient psychiatric care, you have to say you are at risk to self. So did I want to kill myself? No, I don't. I have a safe place to go. I have a safe home up here in Kimball. Um, however, I am stabilized on meds and I also provided two months of clean drug screens. So I don't understand what the issue is, except that he does not want to drive out to Memphis, Michigan, which I understand is a long drive, but with, I mean, I plan to be staying here for up to, you know, four to six weeks or whatever it is. Just one visit, sir. Would, 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 why is that not acceptable when they have, you know, um, child care, you know, people with master's degrees and doctorate degrees working at this facility, facilitating women and children reunification? How is that different than what's down in Monroe, except that he's being lazy? All right. Thank if you. I could, Your Honor. Mr. Zaka, uh, Mr. Zaka, there's no substitute for uh, physical contact between you know, a, a parent and a five-year-old child. Um, the only way we're going to, the longer there's a separation between mother and child, the more difficult it is to reestablish this relationship. Sacred Heart, in the court's opinion, is a safe facility. Uh, the, obviously, this child will not be exposed to mom who's intoxicated or uh, out of control. Um and, and obviously, if Mr. Zaka does not wish to drive two hours, the court understands that. Uh, Mr. Demersha, do you have a family member that could drive that uh, that that has a, a decent relationship with Mr. Zaka and could drive Jack to see you once a once a week or every two weeks for an hour? Do you have someone else that you can suggest could transport him? Um, Somebody that Jack knows. Do you have a? a an, how about your mother? Uh, Brian or, Burns. Brian sister? Burns. Brian Burns. He knows Brian, Brian Burns. Brian Burns. Brian Burns. Okay. Mr. Jack's about Brian Burns. Is Mr. Zonka for this Brian, Brian Burns that could transport Jack to see his mom for an hour? I think one of the other issues that we didn't bring up because we weren't sure if it was necessary or not is that Jack is not currently aware to the best of our knowledge that Mr. Merchant is pregnant. And it was my understanding from previous conversations that she had intended to place this child up for adoption. And we have concerns about bringing him to see his very pregnant mother and being old enough to understand what's going on and then not having ever the ability to see a possible sibling. If this child is in fact going up for adoption, we think that that would be um, both emotionally and simply logically damaging to him at this point. Objection. Yeah. I'm not sure if a five-year-old can fully comprehend that. Uh, is your client comfortable with Brian Burns? Does he know who he is? Yes, I'm comfortable with Brian Burns. Okay. What about uh, Mr. Pratt? Any thoughts? If we have a uh, response with third party, uh, do you see any harm for this five-year-old child having uh, some contact with mom at once, uh, once every two weeks or something? Just some, uh, some contact, just a visit. It, it'll not be in the Sacred Heart facility. 
Your Honor, my understanding after talking with Mr. Merchant is that in a couple of weeks she's planning on being back home. So I'm not sure how quickly we could get that established with Mr. Burns. Right. That's you said that Mr. Burns said you're gonna be there four to six weeks. Yeah, that's I don't know how St. Clair County um, mental health access works and how many extensions I can get. However, I know this facility is willing to work with me. Even say, sir, if I switch my mind on the adoption procedure proceedings, they will let me bring my baby back to the facility and um, oh. help me with all those other things. That's unrelated. I understand that, sir. The court's only concerned about Jack, not concerned about uh, uh, I understand. Uh, unborn I child. We're concerned only about Jack. Okay, yes, sir. I understand. I apologize for uh, Well, the, the, the court's not opposed to Mr. Burns transporting Jack to, to uh, provide the parenting time takes place at Sacred Heart Facility. I don't know what their hours are. They may have the rules where they only allow it maybe on a Saturday or a Sunday in the afternoon. Uh, but uh, would you, are you able to reach out to Mr. Burns to see his availability and he can perhaps in, kind of communicate with Mr. Zonka? The only availability would have to be on the weekends due to being a nearly four hour, four hour plus round trip plus visitation or traffic, and it would uh, okay. affect his schooling at this point. So it would have to be something on a weekend. Okay. Um, no objection to that. All right. Um, well, the, uh, the court will permit uh, Brian Burns to transport the minor child to visit Mom and Sacred Heart. Um, what do you suggest, Ms. Pratt, once every two weeks? Uh, um, I would ask Mr. Merchant if they have specific family times that we could set up so that the child could, could visit during those times as appropriate. Um, any specific time that would work better? No, we'll work around this. For the facility, no. does the facility have certain, like, uh, for example, no, if your they, sister or mother came to visit you, is there certain visiting hours? There is no visitation, but the children are different. That's a different accommodation for them. But they do have staff 24-7 on that can provide and assist with the, the, the transport and um, of, um, supervision of a child and okay. that are well, paid. So Mr. anytime Merchant, I work with the court. You need to make inquiry of staff there in terms of if my son, if someone... Uh, Brought my son Jack to visit me would have to be a Saturday and Sunday. And what are the time frames? Is it one to four, uh, for example, on a Saturday or Sunday? You need to, first of all, determine the, 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 the time frames that they would allow a child to visit you, a five-year-old. Then all you right. can contact Mr. Burns. And if Mr. Burns is willing to do that, uh, then uh, um, perhaps Mr. Burns could reach out to Mr. Zaka okay. and uh, try to uh, facilitate a time that's good with uh, Mr. Burns. If, so perhaps okay. if the court just generally ordered that uh, Mr. Burns is permitted to transport the minor child to visit mom at Sacred Heart facility at, uh, uh, on a weekend at times that is agreeable to that Sacred Heart facility. Okay, um, so, the, uh, 12 to 5 is what my counselor has, has suggested. Um, if for some reason, um, Mr. Burns, Mr. Burns does go to Florida, and I did forget about that during the winter. If for some reason he is still in Florida, would my mother still be acceptable to Mr. Zonka as far as a child transport? My mother were willing to make that long, long trip. Hmm? Mr. Zonka indicated that he would be. Absolutely. Yep. What Thank is you. your mother's name? What is Cynthia, your mother's name? Cynthia Carlson, C-Y-N-T-H-I-A. Carlson, C-A-R-L-S-O-N. Um, just, just in case, you know, it's, so there's, there's two people that are, you know, connected with, uh, you know, um, uh, transporting my son so I can see him and I'm sure that they will right. facilitate that. Okay. All right. Well, the, the, the court would encourage that. So it's, it's uh, up to you, Mr. Merchant to get the ball rolling. You need to first of all, find out for the facility, uh, whether it's Saturday or Sunday, then reach out to, um, um either Mr. Burns or Ms. Carlson, your mother, to, and have them contact Mr. Zonka to coordinate at a time. Let, okay. let uh, your mother know. Yeah. Saturday or Sunday. Um, my counselor did advise me that we they will work around whatever is um uh, admissible to I uh, um the Mr. Zonka and my mother or Mr. Burns. Okay. Okay. So the the, the dates will have to be worked out to Mr. Zonka and your mother, or your mother uh, or Mr. Zonka and um, Mr. Burns. Uh, okay, Mr. Perfect. Zonka. Uh, obviously, it's important for Jack, you know, to have some contact, and even if it's just an hour. I understand it's a long drive, but. 
you know, just, uh, um, you know, whatever time uh, that person uh, thinks appropriate, you know, whether it's two um, hours, I mean, uh, five-year-old's going to, I don't know, it, sometimes you get bored after a couple hours, so perhaps it's a couple hours every other week. Uh, I think what, whatever the parties, I'll let the parties agree upon the time frame. Thank you. Um, um, but I do think as long as you're there at that facility and the period of time enough occur in that facility, Mr. Merchant. Yes. So you will contact your mom and or Mr. Burns. If uh, Mr. Burns is unavailable, contact your mom. Have your mom then contact Mr. Zonka to uh, line up a, a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. Maybe a Sunday is better for Mr. Zonka. I don't know. But the two it, of them will work on the schedule. It depends on his schedule. Yes, his schedule varies. So right. that's fine. So I'm, Mr. I'm satisfied with that. Thank you, sir. All right. So, Mr. Zaka, the court's uh, just encouraging you to try to see if you can make it work for, for the benefit of Jack. Um, and obviously, there's going to be someone supervising. So, it's not going to be mom alone. There'll be someone there. Uh, whoever it's Mr. Burns or Mr. Carlson will be there and probably also maybe a staff member. I don't know. Uh, but obviously, uh, if anything's there, obviously, Mr. Merchant will not be intoxicated or under the influence of anything at that facility. Uh, Ms. McCrath, uh, can just add some general language to that effect? Yes, sir. To the recommendation, we'll review mom's printing time May 28th at 1.30. Mr. Merchant, be focused on yourself right now. If you want to be a mother to Jack, you've got to take care of yourself first. So be yes, very sir. focused on, on your uh, recovery. Uh, don't be in a rush because this can, it's going to be a lifelong thing. Even if you're out outpatient, you're going to be involved in inpatient. Yes, and that's for, why... For the rest of your life. Yeah, that's um, also why I understand where Mr. Zonka is coming from with dragging his feet for me to see Jack. I do understand that it's because he does care about Jack and he doesn't want this to happen again. And, you know, I mean, like, you know, next time it's the crash, it's like, you know, that might be it. And then it's like, and Jack will remember. And I don't want my son to have build up resentments against me. So, yes, sir. I okay. understand. Thank you. So you got to make sure the visit's appropriate. Okay. Um, Thank you so much. And I'm sure other children visit at Sacred Heart. I'm, I, uh, I do believe so. So you can maybe ask whether or not they uh, there are some some games available. You could play play with Jack. There's uh, tons of stuff to do here. Yes. Right. So, uh, mm -hmm. so review this matter on May 28th at 1.30. Mr. Jock, anything further? Nothing for me. I just want to clarify that once Mr. Merchant is discharged from that facility, the parent time will pick back up at shelter services. Correct. Yes. Fine. Once Fine. once you're released, then we want this gotta be supervised. We want to make sure you're on the on the strong path, Miss <laughs> uh, Demersh. So yes, after you release, then uh, you want to contact this agency, Family Control Services, and uh, mm -hmm. schedule the intake. I, I, yeah, I, I have already contacted them to be waitlisted, sir. Um, okay. I'm, I'm just waiting on the response because it was quite a long. It was a long waitlist. So probably by the time I'm out of this facility, then it'll work. It'll go smoothly okay. into that, sir. Yes. Well. Don't be, uh, obviously, the longer you can stay there, the better, because you can develop the, those tools that yes, help sir. you later, later down the road, Mr. Merchant. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, all right. The court appreciates the uh, willingness of Mr. Zaka to give it a try. Um, then if it's okay, some contact to the minor child and uh, mom. Um, Mr. Pratt, any uh, concerns or questions about the language? I think just keep it general. No, sir. It just states that Brian Burns or Cynthia Carlson may transport the child to Sacred Heart for visitation as agreed with father. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Jocks, Mr. Zonka, Mr. Merchant. That will conclude here. You can zoom out and uh, we'll see you back uh, for a review on May 28th at 1.30. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Our recommendation is in Ms. your Ms. queue. Yeah. Ms. Brad, do you have an address for Sacred Heart to send a copy of this order to Mr. Merchant? Um, uh, Your Honor, actually, I do because I have a fax in front of me from Sacred Heart. Uh, I'm sure we could get that information to her. Wonderful. Great. All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Jax. All right. Mr. Rojas? Yes. Okay. Raise your right hand for me, sir. You solemnly swear or affirm any testimony you give in this matter will be true. Yes. All right. So, Mr. Rojas, you're before the court for battery count one, simple battery count two, simple battery count three. You're entering a plea of guilty to count one and no low to count three. You can put your hand down. 
by entering a plea of guilty to count one and no low to count three, you give up the right to have a trial by jury or judge. You give up the right to have the state prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. You give up the right to have the presumption of innocence in your favor. You give up the right to confront witnesses, subpoena witnesses, present testimony and evidence on your behalf to not incriminate yourself or present any testimony or evidence against yourself. And if you're not a United States citizen, a plea of guilty or no contest could negatively impact your immigration status. Do you understand all of these things, Mr. Rojas? Yes, ma'am. All right, factual basis recommendation, please. Yes, Your Honor. The factual basis in this case is that on December 2nd of 2023, Officer Brown responded to 820 Fountain Circle in reference to a domestic disturbance. Upon arrival, the officers made contact with Rashada Jawona, R-A-S-H-O-D-D-A-H, J-E-W-O-N-A-H, who advised that her friend, Mr. David Rojas, had punched her in the face um, in her left eye, causing a small cut under her left eye and um, her lip to split inside of her mouth. She said that the altercation occurred um, because the defendant wanted the victim to make him breakfast. Um, and she told him to go in the kitchen and find himself something to cook. That's when he got out of the bed and walked towards her. She asked for him to back up, but he did not. She tried to uh, defend herself by keeping her arms and by extending her arms to keep him out of her personal space. Um, and that's when he uh, punched her. The recommendation is 12 months, 180 days to serve. The balance suspended upon completion of the service. No contact with the victim and do not return. Um, count two will merge. Count three is 12 months, 180 days to serve. Balance suspended. No contact with the victim. Do not return to the incident location. Um, count three is to run concurrent with count one. Um, and just for the court's attention, at the time of the incident, the victim uh, was 17 years old. And a, a review of his criminal history shows that this is not his first violent incident. He um, previously pled guilty to simple battery, family violence out in Henry County, as well as battery family violence as well, um, in which he had to undergo um, different types of counseling. I did review it is not the same victim in the prior cases as this one. All right, Mathon. Your Honor, um, we're asking that you accept the recommendation. Um, Mr. Rojas let me know that he lives at the incident location, the 820 Found Circle, and that the victim does not live there. That uh, that's what he told me, and that she's just a friend. Um, and so we're at, he said that he does have somewhere else to go, but we're asking that if he's able to provide um, proof when he gets out that that is his residence and not hers, that he be allowed to return to the incident location. But that's six months down the road. That's fine. I don't care. But that's six months down the road. So at this time, Mr. Rojas, I'm going to accept your plea of guilty to count one. No load of count three. Um, count two will merge. I'll sentence you to 12 months to serve 180 days. And I'm liking this day for day. Balance will be suspended as long as you have no contact with the victim, in this case, Rashada Gerona, um, that you have no new violations of the laws of the state of Georgia and that you do not go, um, go back to the incident location until you have provided the court proof that you are that is your residence and not the residence victim. Um, count three will run concurrent with count one, 12 months to serve 180 days, day for day, balance suspended so that you have no contact uh, with the uh, the victim in this case, Rashada Gerana, no new violations of the laws of the state of Georgia, and you may not go back to the incident location until you have provided the court proof that it is your residence and the victim does not reside there. All right, you can go back with the sheriff's office, sir. And your honor, I'm, I'm learning to it. stop hitting people. Yes, ma'am. I may have missed it because he was uh, speaking to me, but is he getting credit since the date of lockup? When is that? Uh, Christmas. When was it Christmas Day. No. Does he get credit for any of the time that he spent? No. Sure. Mr. Rojas, you're going to stop hitting people. You're going to learn today. You gonna stop whatever this anger thing is you got. You hit a seventeen-year-old girl in her face, sir. No, sir. 
you 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 going you going to be where people who hit folk go bye thank you your honor you're welcome cause number uh 22-39902 Good morning. Are you Jeanetta Pugh? I am the beneficiary of the estate. You're the what? I am the beneficiary of the estate. You're the beneficiary of what estate? Answer my questions, please, ma'am. I'm just trying to understand. Okay. What's the announcement? Judge, it's my understanding that Ms. Pugh and her family has retained a, uh, an attorney on this matter. You may, I don't know if you remember, Judge, this is when I was originally appointed on, mm -hmm. and we were on the trial docket. Uh, she hired a new attorney at that point. Uh, Mr. Norwood was on the case for a while and then withdrew. And once uh, recently, when the case came back to me, I visited with her and I was told that they did retain another attorney. I was given the name of Christopher Wiley this morning, but I have not heard from him. And my understanding is that uh, at this point still hasn't filed any, anything with the court. But, okay. But I've been told that that's who was supposed to be taking over, over the case. And, okay. Um, I, uh, for, for the record, I recognize Ms. Pugh. She's been here before. Um, I do as well, for the record. And... I looked into Mr. Christopher Wiley. I can't find that person as a practicing lawyer in the state bar page, and I have not been contacted by anybody on Ms. Pugh's behalf. All right, so Ms. Pugh, uh, Mr. Lewis has been appointed to represent you at this point. Obviously, you know as well as anyone that you're in custody, and we want to get your case taken care of. If you've hired or your family has hired another lawyer, then they have to contact the court so that we can do something with your case. And do you know if they've hired someone? Respectfully, Your Honor, I do not agree um, with your appointed foreign agents, considering that the first duty is to the state and will, consider to, will, will be considered conflict of interest, Your Honor. Okay, so if you don't want, the only thing I can do, I'm appointing an attorney to you to help you, right? Um, so if you don't want a court-appointed attorney, then your only option, uh, two things. One is to represent yourself or to hire a lawyer. So if you don't like the way it works, then you do something different. So are you, listen, listen to what I'm saying. Are you either going to represent yourself or are you going to let Mr. Lewis represent you or are you going to hire someone? Objection, Your Honor. Respectfully, is this a court of record? It is a court of record. So your objection is overruled. Okay. Respectfully, Your Honor, uh, where is the verified claim that is being placed against my trust? It's right here. It's called an indictment. And Mr. Lewis has a copy of it, and he can show it to you. So that would be the verified claim against you. Okay. Your Honor, respectfully, Your Honor, there were writs that was filed to the case that still haven't been received. Um, I've, I've received your petition for writ of habeas corpus and it's denied. Okay. Respectfully, Your Honor, I demand to be released due to lack of evidence of stated claim and not being given the proper opportunity to obtain proper counsel defective defense. It's overruled. Okay. Uh, Okay. You're running out, aren't you? No, it's fine. So here's the thing, Miss Pugh. I appreciate your position, but listen, Miss Pugh, when don't speak over me. Miss Pugh, just because you say respectfully does not mean that you get to interrupt me. That's disrespectful, right? Hang on. Listen, listen to me. Everything you have there is overruled. And here's one of the reasons why is because you have a lawyer and your lawyer will file the appropriate motion. You're interrupting me again, which is disrespectful. 
So I'm going to leave Mr. S uh, Lewis as your attorney, unless you choose to represent yourself or hire someone else. I'm going to give you two weeks to determine what you're going to do. You can go back. To, you can go back with the bailiff. Or comply to your appointed go back. Agents. You already said that, and that's overruled. Go back with the bailiff. Get your own attorney or represent yourself if you don't like it. As always, thank you guys for watching. I hope you had a good time tonight with these clips, and I'll see you next time.